Hi there, and welcome to the first episode of Q&A and C, a monthly show in which I will answer questions I found in the comment section of my videos and questions that my Patreon supporters asked. At the end of each episode, I will also crown the best and worst comment of the month. And if you're just here to look for a specific answer to a question, you can check out the video description below to find all the questions of this episode listed. Without wasting any more time, let's get started. First question. Matthew asked, how are your previous projects doing? Do you still use them? Are there issues you noticed while using them? Any improvements you've done or would like to do? Well, all my previous projects are still doing fine, nothing exploded yet and I did not experience any issues with them either. But there are projects like the DIY cooler that did work to some extent when I finished them, but there is definitely space for improvement. Sadly though, unless I want to make a video about it, I do not have the time to work on such improvements, because I still need to make a new video every week. And I actually use some of my projects every day, like the Bluetooth music system or the ambient lighting system. But of course, there are projects like the CPU hand warmer or the adjustable cooling fan, which I did just for fun, not for everyday use. Shay asked, how do you think the GPIOs on your Octoprint Raspberry Pi can be used to improve the 3D printing experience? I think that there's no need for any additional things hooked up to the GPIOs in order to improve the 3D printing. Octoprint already offers tons of features, any more would be an exaggeration. The comment section asks, what about a workshop tour? Well, okay, here is the workshop tour. As you can see, my workshop is just a corner of my apartment, so a separate video would be pretty boring, in my opinion. So I don't think I will do one in the future. Paul asked, what projects have you thought up that are currently out of your reach? For example, too expensive or too time consuming? Well, I don't want to spoil the surprise here, so I'm just going to say that there are about four projects which I cannot work on at the moment, because of the little workspace I have. Time is usually not the problem, because just like I proved it with the electric longboard, I can work on bigger projects in secret while still uploading a video every week. It's stressful, but it's possible. I'm doing the same right now with my quadcopter project, which is not a secret anymore. But I announced it on Facebook anyway, so who cares? So in the end, it boils down to the income I make with my videos, which is right now not enough to rent a workshop or an office space. Owen asked, have you used your X-Carve to mill any PCBs? If so, how were the results? I'd love to see some pictures. Milling PCBs with the X-Carve was my initial plan when I first got the machine. But right from the start, I did not want to use this method in a project video because I always want to keep it simple when creating circuits or cutting materials, because I want to motivate the viewer to build something on their own. So the only way to try PCB milling would be with a standalone video, which I didn't do yet, because there are so many other interesting things on my to-do list, but I assure you it will happen someday. <sighs> Daniel asks, logic or microcontroller? When I first started with digital electronics, I began with logic ICs, like AND, OR, NAND, NOR, the usual stuff. And it all worked pretty well, but if you want to create something more complex, your circuit will get quite big. So when I started using microcontrollers, it was just awesome that you can include dozens of logic operations in one single IC. Even though discrete logic is in many cases faster than your average microcontroller, I still prefer them because of their size and flexibility. Last question from Peter, who asks, can you explain the difference between a relay, a triac and a solid state relay? In a nutshell, if you simply want to turn on and off your AC appliance, you can go with a relay. But if you want to turn on and off your AC signal very fast in order to, for example, regulate the power consumption of your AC appliance, you need to use a triac, simply because your relay is too slow for that. And a solid state relay combines a triac with complementary circuitry, like an optocoupler, to make it as easy as possible to use for the average person. And now it is time for the worst common of the month which is actually an answer to a discussion which started with a comment saying that I split videos so much because I want that YouTube money and that I became boring because of that, 
which is pretty ridiculous to begin with, but it gets better. Listen to this. The comment says, hmm, I mean he said that he won't do it full time, so it's a hobby. If it's a hobby, you usually don't get money, so I don't really agree to your logic. He's just doing it to maximize the money he gets, but I guess he can do whatever he wants, but I hope that people will show him that the system is messed up and either unsubscribe or just don't watch the vid. Or like I did, remove the exception in my ad block. Mmm, such a lovely comment. Well, you seem like a nice and reasonable person, but let me say that I would have preferred it if you just stopped watching my videos. That would have been awesome. Now to cheer us up again, here is the best comment of the month which are all the Arnold Schwarzenegger comments, and especially this one. Arduino Wi-Fi module, $5. Having Arnold Schwarzenegger talk you through it, priceless. <laughs> I think that is super funny. And with that final joke, let's end this Q&A and C episode here. I hope you liked it, and I hope I see you in the next video. Until then, stay creative.